Welcome to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, sponsored by Motivate Training and Management. This is the podcast where we talk to drivers and industry experts to help you maximize your performances on and off the track. Let's get started with today's show. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 80 of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley, and today we have something a little bit different for you. Back in April, Motivate hosted an online junior driver development summit and we had six fantastic speakers present to the junior drivers um, on different aspects of their driving today we have miranda from backtrack media and she's going to tell us how to edit your eye movies so quite often at motivate one of our core principles is that we try to educate you as much as we can around do it yourself useful tips and strategies and this is just another golden nugget for you to enjoy today. I really hope you enjoy the show. Next week on the show, we've got driver profile of Hugh Barter, um, up and coming Carter, and he, um, what he's planning on doing in 2021. Some very exciting things there. Of course, team, if you haven't subscribed or written as a review, we really appreciate it. If you can race over to iTunes, Spotify, Podcasts, Google, there's so many. Um, anyway, your preferred platform wherever you listen to us and write us a review every month. Um, those reviews go into a draw to win one of our coaching packages. Um, if you don't know about our coaching packages, feel free to race over to motivatetraining.com.au. We've recently updated our content, some new images and testimonials for you to check it out. Any questions, always please let us know. Contact us through our socials. Uh, obviously, there's a contact page on our website as well. Have a fantastic day. It's only a 20-minute tw presentation. You might want to grab your pen and paper and take some notes and send us through those videos that you've edited. Thanks, Miranda's great insight. Hi, everyone. My name is Miranda, and I'm Managing Director and Owner at Vattrack Media. Firstly, I would love to thank Belinda for getting me involved in a Junior Driver Development Summit. I just think this is such a fantastic opportunity, especially bringing the coaching project online and having a range of individuals involved in this project talking about different subjects. My topic for this summit is media. I've been working in the media industry with my business Backtrack Media for the last three years now after I completed a Bachelor of Film and Television. A little bit about us at Backtrack Media. We are a Melbourne-based business specialising in a modernistic creative filmmaking and media management. Our motto at Backtrack is tracking your journey and our aim is to make your memories into artistic creations visually. You may have seen us around the circuit scene and also the rally scene. We work with individuals, teams, categories, doing event media, promotional media, personal or team documentaries and advertising. What makes us unique at that track is our concept on storytelling. Because we are filmmakers, you could say that we see things through a different lens to the typical broadcasting company. That all comes down to editing and how we break down our videos for their emotional and sensual purposes. No two videos are the same at that track media as well as no two clients. Editing is a massive factor as to how we present ourselves online and the story we want to tell for every individual client. That leads me to today's subject that I am covering under the topic of media editing. A lot of you may have active Facebook pages, Instagrams, LinkedIn's, YouTubes. My challenge for you in this time period is to gather some of that old footage that you have sitting there and edit it together into some form of a promotional video. Today I'm going to take you through some tips and tricks on how to use a baseline editing program and that is none other than iMovie. This is such a fantastic program if you're a beginner editor. I know of a lot of guys that use this program to edit little videos after a race weekend with their GoPro footage. I personally have such fun memories of iMovie because this is the program that I first started learning to edit on. Before I moved to bigger programs, obviously what I'm using now in Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere. What I aim to do today is run you through some basics of this program, some little shortcuts, how to insert the footage and get started on a project. 
Welcome to my iMovie tutorial. Now today I'm going to be running through the desktop version. There is also a version available for your iPhone. It's practically the same. You can obviously do a lot more on the desktop version and I find that I have the big thumb syndrome. So on my phone, it's a lot harder to edit. <laughs> iMovie is obviously the baseline editing program for Apple. Um, it's available on all Mac. If you are a Windows user, Apple hasn't released a Windows version of the program as of yet, but there's a similar program on Windows, which is Windows Movie Maker. So to start off with, we will open the program. When you open iMovie, it'll do a funky little jiggle. Sometimes you jump along with it. The computer may take a few seconds to load. There we have it. So first off, opening the program. When you open the program, you will come to the project page, as you can see here. This is where all your projects are displayed for easy viewing. Now, I'm going to start off by clicking on the demo. As you can see, this is the video that you all just watched. Today, I'm going to run through how I made this video, utilizing some of the essential iMovie effects and features and key elements of any edit such as audio, colour, slow motion, cut beats, titles. Now you won't have these clips <laughs> in today's video but that doesn't stop you from testing these methods on your own media. Personally when I do import footage or when we do have a project the way I like to edit it especially if it's like a little promo video I have establishing footage at the beginning, context footage and personal footage in kind of the start towards the middle and then you have your action yes that's what we love to see and then by the end we finish up on the outro and the credits if you were creating a project you would click create new and then click movie I've already set everything up in example. When you open up a project, obviously you have to import your footage because what else are you going to edit with? So on the left hand side here, you'll see project media. So here is where all the media that you have in this project that will be in your timeline here will be stored. iMovie library is the collection of all your media from all projects that you have in iMovie. If, you, if you're interested in organization and all that stuff, um, you can create an event and chuck all your media in there. But today we're just gonna run everything under the normal iMovie library. Before I start, I wanna run along the top here. So you have projects. Here you can show or hide your media library. Depending, sometimes when you view back a project, it's great to just be able to view it um, without this as a distraction. If you want to import media, you can click on this little button here and import from anywhere on your computer or hard drives if you have them plugged in. Now, along the top here, we have my media. This is obviously all this. If you go to audio, iTunes up the top here. Um, this is automatically connected to your iTunes account. So if you want to use music or any funky beats, do keep in mind with all the copyright stuff um, that you're going to go too wild because you can't just use a normal track like Lady Gaga Born This Way. You then can click to sound effects and iMovie comes with a range of just random sound effects um, and they can all be found there as well. If you scroll along here, there is titles. All these titles here, you can customize, change, the font with um, we're actually going to be using titles today I actually really love the iMovie range um, and for such a base program I mean you can do credits you can do a pull focus title I mean it even has like far far away like Star Wars we then go to backgrounds now I don't use this feature a whole lot this is handy if you do travel vlogs and finally along the top we have transitions now these are very important these are all your cross dissolves your fades to white your wipe left your circles these are quite cheesy actually I intend to use them a lot but <laughs> uh, if you if, if, if we want to do a cheesy project and especially for kids and stuff like that um, they are very popular now all you do if you want to insert something in your timeline is you click and you drag 
It's literally as simple as that. This is raw. This is straight from the drone. We want to add a little bit of colour to it, spice it up, because obviously it's looking quite bland at the moment. Colour. Colour correction is very important for a project. Um, a lot of the footage that you see in that track, when it comes in, looks like this. It's very raw. This is like the magic wand. This has automatically improved the video and audio quality of the selected clip. So if you don't really want to do any work and you want to just leave it up to the program, you can click this and it changes the colour for you on what it will think will automatically look awesome. Now, sometimes that's not the case, honestly. <laughs> and we have to do it manually. So this little symbol here stands for color balance. Now, you can obviously do auto, which is little magic wand here, Harry Potter, I'm going to call it. You have match color. Um, if you have a range of clips as well, you can match the color within them. So there's consistency, which I think is really good for a baseline pro um, program that you do have match color. There's also white balance here. Um, you can click on that. Um, there's also skin tone balance as well. I don't use that a whole lot. It doesn't work too well, um, but it is there as an option. I use this a lot. It's like a palette. Um, for color correction and you can adjust your exposure and sometimes this is all you really need. So for this clip we're gonna just bring this a little down. See how the greens are now emphasized and we're gonna bring this a little further down like this. This is your saturation. Now this is cool tones and warm tones. Look at the contrast between the two just from doing that. When you first get something in a project you want to adjust your clip length. So if you go to the end of the clip, you'll see these two little arrows. Um, and you can just go like this. Hold it down with your keypad and just move your clip. And that can change the length of your clip. The way I love cutting is, for example, going like this. And then on my keyboard, clicking Command B. B is blade. That's how I usually slice things. It's just going command B, command B, and then what I don't want, I just delete. Okay, so next we are going to look at the funky tunes. Now, I've already imported my one into iMovie, um, but it's so easy to import a tune. All you have to do is grab it from anywhere on your desktop or in audio, and you just click and you drag and it automatically brings it in below your picture and recognizes it as a tune or a song. So we're just going to delete that because I don't really want to use fun time. <laughs> oh boy. Next, when we look at this, um, we're going to look at making it bigger. So with your iMovie timeline, you can make it really small or you can make it really big. Something to note when you have music in a project, and this is something that we've constantly got to look at as well. We don't want to make it too loud. If you run your music this high at 400%, it is going to blast through your speakers and sound horrible. It's just a matter of adjusting that volume. We're going to begin this edit by fading in music. So you can fade in and fade out your music, depending. For this, we're just going to use a slight fade in at the beginning. Okay, now we're going to add a title. The title that we're going to use today is just really generic. I'm going to name this Alpine Rally. And then you can do like a, a subline. It's going to be test day. And that's as simple as that on how to do a title. You can change your title around a bit. You can um, have different fonts if you would like. I do love tending to work with just a bold font. Now you can also make your text bigger. Now that sometimes depends on the program that you're using or the font that you're using. For this, we can't make it any bigger. You can outline your text if you would like. You can make it bold. Um, some of them won't allow you to do that. And then you can also change the color. So we can make it pink. We've got the first little bit of the video right there. Now at the beginning of a video, we always use a fade in effects or transitions just so it doesn't abruptly start like this. So for this, we're going to go to transitions. We're going to get a little cross dissolve here and we're going to bring it down. That's as simple as that. Now, this is 1.0, so that's one second. You can change that just by double clicking on it and then typing in what you would like. I tend to work with under five seconds for that. Um, especially in this pro pro for that. Especially in this program, it doesn't give you the flexibility to be able to play around with it anymore. 
and you can bring your text to either play when the fade-in happens or after the fade-in and you just press down and drag. Now for the next bunch of clips that I've inserted I've cut them to the beat of the music. Now this is actually hard to show today because I'm not recording sound through this. Cutting to the beat of a song is very vital and like I said before making sure that your timeline is maximized when you do this. If you're wanting to cut to a beat make sure that your timeline is maximized and that you just scroll till you're right with the wave. And sometimes the way I like to do this is moving my cursor, say that's the beat there, just clicking and dragging that back and forth till it's on the beat and that will automatically jump to be there. In importing these clips as well, you can do your color correction and that's what I like to do between um, every single clip that goes into the timeline. Now for these ones here I have slowed them down and that is what I'm going to be showing you how to do next. But before all that some of these were shaky and we obviously had to stabilize them. So iMovie does have stabilization if you have a shaky image and you'll find that along the top here. And all you have to do is click stabilize shaky image and it will analyze it for the dominant motion. Usually this just takes, can take up to a few minutes depending on the length of the clip. See that shake? Usually keep this at about 33%. If you end up going to 100%, sometimes the program will create its own little black borders around the image. So we usually just keep this around the 30s. Now these clips are already color corrected. The program, I did that before. Okay, so we've got our context now, which is loaded into here. The next thing we're gonna do is add a transition. So we had a little fade to white. This is just to break it apart, make it look funky. And we're gonna put that as 0 0.3. We are now ready to move into the next phase, which is the action. So I've just copied and pasted this from the other project and I'm gonna reset just these two. So I can just talk about what I have done to them and how to make them slow-mo. This is how this would look without slow-mo just playing normally. Obviously still looks good, but the effects just aren't as dramatic as we can make them. All you click is on this little wheel here and you go normal and then we go slow. So we're gonna, you can reduce the speed to 10%, 25%, 50% or it can do an auto. Here's where you can also choose to reverse your clip. So today we're gonna work at about 50% as you can see here. That way it just looks really clean, just glides through so nicely. Depending on the clip and the audio of that clip, you can adjust it. Um, voice enhance, music enhance, loudness, hum reduction, bass boost, bass reduce. Usually I just like to run this out flat. If we've got a clip where someone's talking, sometimes you uh, can put a little bit of a hum reduction to it. That's just reducing the background noise. Sometimes you can voice enhance, but that kind of sounds bad. I don't really like iMovies. Uh, voice enhance. Uh, <laughs> um, you can also reduce the background noise but this makes you sound like you're drowning underwater. It just doesn't work too well in this program. Um, you also have clip filters. Now this is basic iMovie here. <laughs> you have blast, you have negative, you have sci-fi, you have aged film, film grain, camo, heat wave. This is really great for kids if they want to experiment um, with different colors. Usually I don't touch that a lot. Um, you can also put an audio effect to things. Um, you've got a cathedral, um, you've got pitches, so high pitched. If you want to sound really deep, if you want to sound like a robot or an echo or a telephone, they're just for fun edits. I wouldn't put them on the professional edit or anything. And then you've got the conclusion of the edit before I cut back to another shot before cutting back to some more of the in-car footage. Now, we're going to do the outro. So we have another shot from the drone here before we're going to fade that out into our outro. In between these two clips, we are going to do a nice little cross dissolve and set it again to about 0 0.3. As you see there, it goes right into that track. Yay. And that's how we conclude that video. Now for this, if you do have a company animated logo, 
you can easily, the same way you import your footage, import it into iMovie. Um, if you have a picture logo, that is what I'm going to show you next. Cropping. As soon as you import it in, you're going to get this happening. It's just going to be, woo, it's going to get big. You can do cropping on iMovie. You can do fit, which is the whole image. You can do crop to fill. So this is where you can get creative if you just want a certain part of the image to be shown or if you want the whole part of the image. Or you can do key burns and that will pan depending on how you want it to. I usually like doing fit because at least then I know when it fades out it will be the whole image. Now to conclude this we just don't want the music to end abruptly so you can also fade down your music. I tend to do this at about... The, at about the start of your last clip. Now your edit can be obviously a lot more eye-catching and professional than just importing a standard clip into iMovie with a title. So that's all that we could unfortunately do in this time frame. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial on iMovie and there's so much more that meets the eye with this program. So if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email at backtrackmedia at gmail.com. If you are doing any edits yourself and you need a few more tips or you need some help, you can also send us an email as well. I'd really like to thank Belinda for getting me involved in the Junior Driver Development Summit for this opportunity and it's such a great way to keep people's minds active. Thanks so much everyone. See you. Well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's show. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Now, remember all the show notes with the links and the specials mentioned in today's show are available over at motivatetraining.com.au. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you could head to iTunes or Stitcher, type in Motorsport Coaching, subscribe and leave us a review. Each week, I'll read them out and you'll go into monthly draw to win a fantastic prize. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at motivatetraining.com.au or head over to our Facebook page at Motivate to Tea. Until next time, take care.